Hi everybody! Today we're going to be working on some trees in watercolor. As you can see, I've kind of just started a little bit of a, a small example. And it's okay if you don't have like the exact colors because obviously you can make whatever color trees you like, whatever color you've got on you. Um, I am using my palette it is very messy because this is the one I use the most, but if you can tell right here and like down here, I've got whatever colors that I'm using. This one is probably burnt umber or burnt bleh, burnt umber, burnt sienna. It goes all the way around in kind of a rainbow shape. You can see my mixing tray. It's uh, pretty <laughs> colorful, and that's what I'm using now to make this uh, kind of example. So first one I did was the larger tree which you can see right there and then as you can see the layers underneath are lighter like we do with any other sort of watercolor situation um, and then even with here the colors that I started with are all the lighter colors except for when I started bringing in that tree it was this kind of grayish black color here and that's what we're going to start with um, and then we'll move on later to how this one kind of works out so uh, I'm going to move this over and then I'll come back to it after, but to start, we can, oh, I forgot to mention too, um, if you have your piece like this and you don't know which brush to use for the larger ones, you're going to use a brush kind of like this. And you can see it's a round brush, kind of as you can, you know, you'd think of it more like a bullet tip shape because it's completely round. Mine's a little squashed to the moment because I've been using it. Um, but yeah, you always want to start with a bigger brush and then go back down because if you're using a tiny brush like 
this one, which is one I use quite a lot, you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting those larger spaces, right? So you wanna start with something a little bit bigger. You can either use a round, this one is a filbert. Uh, as you can see, it's flat on one side and the top looks kind of like a, an acorn shape. And then it's just very thin on the other side, right? So that's one that I use quite a lot because I can kind of move and sweep a lot of things in different directions. Um, you'll see too, because I'm holding this up and it's so wet, it's starting to kind of gather at the bottom where the water kind of stopped. I can fix that. Um, but yeah, so that's what you'll want to do. You'll want to use a little bit of a larger brush to kind of push along the rest of your, your paper, um, your paper, your paint. Um, so I would start with the round if you've got it. If you don't, that's okay. If you are just using one brush, that's fine. It just may take a little bit longer because you've got a lot more area to cover. So um, first things first we're going to do, um, we're not using the big trees yet. So we're going to do your smallest brush and you're going to make a line. And so I'm using Payne's Gray. If you've got black, that's perfect too. Um, as you can see with my brush here, I'm I'm not using a whole lot. So if you've got a, a palette you're using that's plastic, you can kind of brush it around your, your little center area and you can see how much paint you've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a very little bit of it so it's very see-through. You can tell it's very easy to kind of push around like that. And I'm going to draw a line straight down. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. In fact, I'd probably say you want to make it a little wavy because it is a tree, right? So you want to make sure that there's a little bit of movement there. But yeah, first things first, you make a little line. And it's not very big. If you want to make it a little darker, you can grab a little more paint and literally touch the water where your paint was and it'll drag it down for you. So, as you can see, mine's a little large. Mine's going to be very dark now because I've added a lot more paint, but that's okay. I'm good with that. So I'm going to grab a little water and I'm going to pull a little bit of this down because it's quite dark. Um, you don't want it as dark as I did, but hopefully you can see it a little better. But you see how it's getting lighter at the bottom? That's where you can start pulling down the rest of your paint. If you really got it up too dark, you can kind of wipe it away, but you know. So um, if you're going to have a little bit of trouble, you can take your line. You can practice a little bit depending on how big your tree is going to be, whatever you want to do there. I'm going to make this a fairly large tree because I've made it a fairly stocky sort of stump area. And then I'm going to start pulling out the sides. So when I'm using my brush, I often kind of twist it like this a little bit to kind of get that point. Um, Cause if you see it right here, it's, it's a very small tip and you want to get that point as, as straight and, and sharp as you can. And then you can see that if it's still wet, it's going to follow whatever area the water is. For me, I'm going to just start flicking up for the top part of the tree. You can see if it's not how you're wanting it to go, you can change it. As you can see with a larger stump like this, it's going to take a lot more time and a lot more effort to get those larger flicks through there. And that's the start of my, my tree. I'm going to go down a little farther now, and then I'm going to just start doing that. Most trees like this, you're going to see them go out and then tip upwards slightly, depending on where they're going. So I'm going to kind of push that along. And because, like I said, my tree is a little bit larger, I'm going to just make very large strokes to get those nice, sharp edges, right? Um, and this is the nice thing about having your line first is because you can follow it down and get exactly where you want to be with everything. Um, and like I said, if you have a really thick line, that's okay. Even I didn't, like, I didn't mean to make that large of a line, but here we are and I'm going to kind of work with it. So Bob Ross would say that's happy little accidents and we all know he liked trees, so we're good with this. So I'm going to pull it, pull it up, give it a little shape. And I'm just going to keep working down until the bottom. And as you can see, it's going to have a little bit of give and it's going to come larger as you go down. But that's okay. Um, if you, you'll you notice too in nature, if you see a lot of these types of trees, sometimes they, they have a certain width that's all the way down. That's okay too. Sometimes they have, 
you know, spots that are broken, spots that only have tiny little bits. And you can see I'm kind of doing this motion, right? So that kind of motion when you're pushing those branches out. But I'm going to give you guys some time to do that. If you like what you did, if you if you feel you want to start over again, this is a great time to do it because I'm just going to go ahead and work all the way down my tree until I'm ready to work on my next part. So if anybody has any comments or would like to say anything, you let me know. We'll have a good chat while we paint some of this tree. And it is kind of a nice blustery day out, so it's a perfect time to paint fall colors. Add a little bit of spookiness to it. Maybe if somebody wants to paint ghosts or pumpkins, it's also a great example of what you can put next to the tree instead of the tree, whatever you like to do. And again, you can see I'm doing the strokes a little bit down in some spots and a little bit up. Trees are rarely perfectly even, and that's the same for their branches. So if it ends up being, you know, not even or not perfect, that's actually better because nature's never perfect or perfectly symmetrical when it comes to things like trees and plants. It actually makes it more realistic to me when it's, it's all over the place. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, if it feels too light, add a little bit in there. Um, but if you can see this area, what I've done here, um, if it's dry already and you're putting darker on it, it will look like it's on top of it. So that darkness can help play into maybe looking like the, the, the needles of the tree are coming forward a little bit, right? And we'll, we'll deal with that a little more on the top once this dries. Remember too, when your watercolor dries, it dries lighter than it is put on, depending on how much paint you put on also, but yeah. Ah, uh, welcome to the, to the viewing. Now I'm going to make one go up a little bit. Give it a little bit of a... longer kind of look. I'm also making this one a little thinner because I think it needs to kind of even out a tiny bit there. And again, remember very little amounts. So if you're looking at how much to use, remember if you can pull it across the bottom like that and you can see it sort of see through, that's great. That's, a, that's more than you need. That's perfect. Good to go. Um, and as I'm getting down into the lower parts of this tree, I'm going to remember too that a lot of trees tend to have some broken parts to them. So maybe I'll just kind of add something like that there. Doesn't have to be, you know, full on Christmas tree. It's not even December yet. <laughs> so yeah, you can just start making things happen here. Maybe some of your branches has have other branches coming off of it. You know, trying to decide what a realistic tree is going to kind of look like. And so for me, I kind of like that. I like how it looks. I'm going to kind of stay pretty close to that. Maybe have one more branch coming down fairly close to this part. Just for kicks. And you can kind of see it's creating this nice kind of complete look of what your tree is, right? Trees are one of my favorite things to do in watercolor because they're just so, they're kind of calming to do for one. And they just come out so cool when you kind of get into them. You know, if you take a little watercolor set, you can always, you know, go out into nature, paint on your own. Weirdly great experience. All right, so 
kind of like how that's looking. Kind of like the lopsidedness of it. And I'm kind of letting my brush dictate a little bit where some of the pieces are going because I kind of am trusting the randomness of it to give it that natural feel. You know, next thing I can do, I mean, it's going to be a tree sitting somewhere, so we got to put it in a spot and give it a little bit of a hill. So I'm just going to take my line and drag it down where the water was. And as you can see, it kind of did that sort of bloom. And any time, this is where I could probably use a larger brush, any time you put water somewhere, it's going to pull everything else into it, right? And this is a great advantage because you can see what it's doing is pulling down these beautiful little bits at a time. And you can kind of move those around too, connect it with the rest of your painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more water to give it a, just a bit more of a flow. And give that tree somewhere to kind of stand, right? Um, a lot of times when I start losing some of the color, I do a bit of that blotting motion, as you can see here. And it kind of pulls down just little bits that I kind of think really go well with this sort of painting, right? Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow that I've got here. If you've got yellow, it's a good chance to kind of play with it. Um, if you have a really bright yellow, that's okay. I'm going to use this kind of yellow ochre. And I'm going to just place my brush in areas where I know there's already water. And I'm also going to throw my brush because why not? Um, but yeah, so I'm going to grab more of that yellow again. I'm using very little amounts. This one kind of got into more of my other paint, so there's a bit of red in it too, which is fine. But you can see I'm just kind of blotting it in there. I'm not dictating a lot of where it's going. I'm just kind of letting it do its own thing. And you know, it's giving this beautiful transition from this yellow ochre to this Payne's Gray. And the nice thing about Payne's Gray, it's kind of got a little bit of a blue to it. So you'll see that it really kind of pushes in those colors together. Um, if you use felts and you put felts in water, you'll see it have like a bluey or a purpley tinge to it. And it's kind of the same sort of feel to me, except for just a little more brightness in there when you use water or felts. Um, but this one kind of lets it kind of blend out really nicely. So, you know, if you want to make cards for people, you want to make it look like really watercolor based, this is a perfect way to do it. And because I like this ochre so much, I'm going to just keep adding some here and there. So you see how it's moving? It's my favorite part of it. Ooh, and I'm knocking things over. This is going to be a very messy class, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, so you can see how every time I dab in more color, it just does its own sort of thing. These little blooms happen. This little hillside's becoming a lot prettier, right? So I'm going to work with that add some more up here and I think I'm just going to leave it at that until there's some more dry spots. And because it's fall this kind of does a little bit more for your work. And again this is just the base layer. When you go in and you want to add more to that scene, to that groundwork, um, that's going to be a perfect spot for you to start adding more and adding darker pieces. So you've already got this lovely dark bit there, which is already going to be kind of the tree silhouette um, and it's going to really give you that sort of feel of the fall colors and so I mean you can take a few different things like we did in the other picture and kind of start adding and painting through that because you see that ochre is going to pull in some of that black and it's going to just give it a nice kind of darkness to it, a brown sort of. I'm going to add those around, make some grass happen. And again, it's the same, flicking, ooh, geez. <laughs> the same flicking motion as you do with the tree, right? So 
you're going to just flick it outwards and up. And again, you're going to just let it do its thing. Let it have short ones, let it have long pieces of grass, because you're never going to be able to control exactly everything about those, and you don't want to. All you're trying to do is give it that natural sort of feel, get something that really helps people kind of believe that that's what it is, right? Any sort of thing that you draw or paint or sketch always has elements of something that is real so that it shows that people will recognize what it is. Trees, if you look at monsters, dragons, things like that, there are bat wings involved or scales from snakes and lizards and that's what make them you know more believable as what they are if there's something that they're created with that, that doesn't quite exist then it, it's you have to ask questions or you have to really base it on something else again something else that exists in order to create that and something that people will will enjoy or will understand um with nature um it's it's trying to master the uh, we'll call it the chaos <laughs> of what's happening in the image, right? Trees are just very chaotic sometimes, especially with how their their branches or their or everything else kind of fits into it. I think so anyway. So I've got the beautiful yellow, I've got this, you know, ochre and this awesome Payne's Gray. I'm going to just give it a little bit more of a base here. And I'm going to pull a little bit more black into the areas where that kind of rougher look is. Just kind of fix it a little bit. And you can go back in again, even if it's still wet, and put some of that black in there, right? Because you can see how it wants to pull itself across the page. It's moving. And you can, again, dictate where that goes. Just a little bit. You don't need it a lot, right? You just want to give the impression that there's more than just yellow there. You want it to be your landscape, your, your ground. And when that dries, you can go in again with some ochre or some even like darker browns and get those, you know, little flicks of grass or things like that. All right. So I'm liking how this has started. I really like how this is going. It's, it's turning out to be really pretty. And I think because if it's fall, there's not just all yellow yet. We're going to maybe add a little bit of the green coming through here. Darker greens because that's going to have kind of a colder look to it. Um, maybe I will go through cold and, and warm colors one of these days. But right now I'm just going to start pushing these greens up the side of my hill. And maybe, if I'm feeling a little sassy here, take some of this green, if it's got a lot of water, and just kind of tap it in there. Yeah, kind of like how that looks, so do that. And if you're feeling a little more interested in that green, you can kind of put it in through where the other pieces of grass are, kind of show that those colors are changing. And I mean, this is a live video, so if there's any mistakes, you know, they happen. Oh well. But yeah! If you want to, you can even add more trees. You know, you're not kind of stuck on this one. And you've got lots of room for other trees to kind of appear. So, I mean, if you have one coming down sideways, like we did that other, that other picture, kind of place it right in there. Welcome. Thanks for coming to the painting tutorial. But yeah, so I'm going to add another tree right there. You can see that this stump is a little skinnier than the one that I did before. Give it a little bit of a different look. And I'm going to push all this black into, well, black, Payne's Gray, whichever you're using, um, into the rest of this because I think it's going to look really good for one and for two. I don't want it just sitting there because what's that? what that's going to do is it's just going to have one big dark spot and it's not going to look very good. So I'm going to brush it out into the rest of my painting. like that. So you can kind of see 
um, all the things that are happening to it, you can see that it's pulling down into your, your groundwork there. It's mixing with some greens. Sometimes it can kind of work against you because it, it really, you know, takes over from what colors you've got in there. But it does also give you a little bit of a chance to kind of make a really kind of, what's the word, dramatic or very exciting sort of few things happen. So, yeah, I'm really liking that. I really love when the darker colors kind of bleed into the lighter colors and then it kind of disappears into the paper. Which is, I just think it looks so good that way. But yeah, so I've got that. This is where we're at. Um, I do know that it is the holiday time, so if you do tune in or you haven't gotten to tune in at this moment being live, then that's okay. It will be up on our Facebook page. All right, so again, with the tree, we're going to do some flicking, get those branches in there. And because this tree is kind of sideways, you're going to expect that few things are going to happen. So whenever you're looking at nature with plants and things, anything's going to want to go up. It's always going to want to move up. If a tree is going sideways, you'll notice all its branches will probably start growing on the top of that versus going down because it's always trying to like reach to the sun. So I'm going to give it a little more to the top of it. Mm, I didn't like how that flipped, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to do a very small amount that's maybe kind of fallen down to the to the bottom. I don't think this one's going to have a lot of branches because it is sort of small, pushed over. And I'll give it something. So you see this one versus this one up here has branches all kind of flicking up this way some coming down but you still see those those needles trying to move the other way this one's going to have them poking all over the place trying to get up to to that top part i've made it a lot thicker here because i think maybe maybe we'll give it a chance to kind of be more of a full tree than a little measly thing and add a little bit more of that black um, don't be alarmed also if your paper starts getting kind of pilly. Um, with lower quality paper, it will start to pill and um, actually will start to remove paint. So you want to be very careful with how much water you're placing on there. Um, more water tends to be better for the most part with watercolors, but sometimes it can be very detrimental to what you're, what you're doing. So just make sure that you're being very very careful with the amount of work you're doing all at once. Um, and this is why I tend to work with a lot of different paintings all at once. It's because I don't want to get too into one painting and then ruin it later, right? So I'm, I'm just gonna be very careful with that. Um, very often I have ruined a watercolor painting because I get way too into it and I forget that I have to let it dry and slow down. Um, it's the same as if you're, you know, you're rubbing glue off your skin or something from you know from doing a project and there's something there and you're rubbing it in pills and then you can peel it off that's kind of what that's going to do with the paper yeah so it's very similar to my first painting as you can see but i'm kind of liking this one a lot more actually which i'm good with i'm happy with it i do notice though that some parts have dried so I'm going to go ahead and just add some to the spots where I think we'll have a little bit darker, darker branch areas. Um, and if you're working on this with me as you go, don't worry. Um, if you haven't gotten through it the whole way, you can pause it later. You can watch it again. More than welcome to, to replay it. Watch me almost break things as I go. <laughs> yeah. So I'm kind of just darkening some spots I think could use it. Maybe add a little more to this uh, stump. Well, not stump. <laughs> Words. Um, but yeah, 
So I'm going to add a little darker to this guy because it's very light because we just put them in. And again, be very careful because a lot of the time, if it's not dry enough, it's going to bleed back into your other colors. So if you're using different colors, this is where it might pose a problem for you. Because no matter what you do, it wants to move into where the water's been put. So for a quick example, if, if you saw this and how it bleeds into it, um, it's the same thing as if you drew a line with just water like this right if you draw a line with just water you know i'm gonna move it a little farther away because i kind of like this one um so <laughs> we'll do it maybe maybe up in this corner i'll try and edge it over for you so if you were to draw a line just with water like this if you've been in any of my other classes you'll know what happens next is you will have something that will pull all that color to where it wants to go but the funny thing is it won't move outside of where your color is. So just pay attention to what happens with that. Um, but I mean, if you kind of like the dark cloudy days, you can turn those into clouds. Right? You can make it happen. <laughs> you can fix things. Um, although watercolor is not as forgiving as other, other mediums, you can use negative space. You can use the things that you think might work with it you know this is kind of a, a dreary looking day for these trees so i can mush those in there but you notice it only follows where my paintbrush pulls it it's not going to want to move past any of the other you know the other points unless there's water there or unless you physically make it move there and it's actually kind of nice for a lot of things because sometimes that's the control you need, and that's the only control you're going to get with it. Maybe I'll move some clouds down here. Right? Add some more black. And that's how we do those trees. I know we have lots of trees like this in the Okanagan, so if you're looking to do them, it's a really great thing you know, on a nice sunny day, you can kind of work with that. Yeah. And again, I'll just show you. It wants to move within any areas where the color, or, or where the water is. It's the favorite thing to watch, I know. But if you, uh, if you do it too much, it's just going to ruin your paper or it's going to just turn into a big blob. I am a person that, you know, touches and moves the watercolor around a little bit with my finger sometimes. Because I don't like not having that much control with my watercolors. <laughs> and I'm trying to work on that. But yeah, so you can see now it's got this nice kind of cloudy look to it. We've got our colors in the bottom. And, and this is shaping out to be a decent little, little exploration of painting trees. So I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, I can get even a little more into it with my larger brush. And I can sort of just take some of this ultramarine blue and move it across some of my image. If it's dry, you can move it over certain parts of your image. I'm going to be careful and not do that. So I'm just going to give it a little blue here and there. Try and sneak it in some areas. And you can use that to kind of equal out that yellow that you've got and give that nice kind of bit of contrast. Nice little bit of color into your painting so it doesn't look super dull or super dark in any way. Give a little bit of tone to it if you will. And it gets rid of some of the contrast really good. Anyway. But yeah, so now you can see it's got this nice little Bit of color it's got the yellows it's got the dark colors and now if there's dry spots where this is pretty dry you can add to it you will notice too with your your paper if it's this kind of practice paper it's 90 pound probably or 140 pound um, it will buckle a little bit so you'll feel if you put your fingers over the dry spots you'll feel those bumps that's okay um, that's just 
you know, what happens. <laughs> You can tape it down um, if you're using wet on wet. So if you're actually wetting the paper down and then painting on it, um, if you do a wet X on the back of it, if there's nothing underneath, it might help bring that kind of bowing down. Or you can tape down your paper, lots of different things you can do. Um, if I'm just working in a booklet like this, though, I'm not too worried about it. I'm okay with it. All good right here. So right here, I'm just going to push in some more of this black. And then I'm going to just say I'm done with it because I like how it is. And I know that with watercolor and with me, I always overwork things. And then at some point I go, oh, I ruined it. And that's just because I, I have trouble stopping when I'm painting in watercolor because I don't, I don't let it sit before I do more. I just kind of work and work and work until it goes, oh. <laughs> And then it's ruined and then I have to start again. So <laughs> I'm going to leave it like that. And that is our trees for that one. So before we get too far past our halfway point, I'm going to move into trees like this um, because they are, <laughs> they are fairly easy to do that. They are kind of fun and they're just pretty, especially if you're using those reds and yellows that come with fall, come with um, October and Thanksgiving and, and Halloween, all those. These are the kind of trees I would want to be painting. So I'm going to be sort of careful with it because I know it's a little wet and I kind of like this one. And then I just pull it out of my hand. Um, I would keep your paintings in your booklet if you can. But I'm, this is just a teaching one. But yeah, that's how it looks now. So if you want to keep practicing this or you want to go through the tutorial again, you're, you're totally capable to. Again, if it's wet, you're going to see this happening. If you're pulling it up like I am, um, do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just remember that if it's not dry completely, it's going to come down, right? And anything with gravity, really. So like to know how you guys do with this. So if you've um, if you've gone through it, if you've decided that you've done a good job with it, that's awesome. If you even are watching this and it's not on the live, you are more than welcome to post what you've painted. Um, even even if it's an older video, always love seeing what people are doing with these. All right. So the next one, we're gonna use the bigger brush, and this is gone. <laughs> this is my bigger round brush and I use it for covering more surfaces, especially if I'm using a smaller, uh, a smaller surface to paint on. And I'm going to just use my water and I'm going to just create a few blobs and I'm going to use this yellow to kind of go with it. See, and it, like I said, it wants to bloom and follow where all that paint is. And like we talked about, it's going to be drying lighter than it, it gets put on. But you just want to make sure there's no really dark spots because what's going to happen there is it's going to be harder to add to it if it's too dark. So just kind of pay attention to how light it is. This is pretty good, I think. Um, and again, trees are kind of like a weird triangle shape. You'll still notice here. That sort of triangular, bigger on the bottom, smaller on the top. Um, it's not always like that, but generally when I look at trees, that's what I kind of see. Right here, I've added like a little bit um, of a bow here because I want the trunk to come through this way. I use the Payne's Gray for the trunk because I think it's a good option. But before I do that, I'm going to take some of my red and some of that, that yellow ochre and make a kind of fall sort of orangey color. And I'm going to just push it in the bottom like this. Um, because this is going to be bottom of my tree. I'm going to blend it out into the rest of it. I don't want it to be all yellow and all one color. And while it's wet, I'm going to take advantage of that and move that across. And you can see it's very subtle. It's kind of gentle. That's all you want for it. 
you just want that difference from dark to light. All right, maybe add a little bit up here just to show a bit of a difference in where the branch parts are, where those leaves are going. And here's where you can have a little fun too. You can add different color trees around. You just want to remember when you're doing it that you don't want a lot of that color in there just yet. So maybe we've got another tree here. I'm going to be very careful and not touch the other tree until it's dry or else it's going to bleed into everything else and we don't want that. So maybe one in the background, a little smaller, it kind of has some lower bits and again you can see how light it is i'm working really lightly and that's what we want we don't want to go too far with it and you can see it's very very close to the same color that we just put on the bottom of our other tree and that's because we we want to just keep that kind of consistency so with that what i can do is add a little bit more of my red whichever I choose to use. And that's where we can kind of push that into the bottom of it. You'll notice if I um, put that much down, I'm actually washing out my brush so I can push that around a little more without adding more paint because I don't know yet exactly how far I wanna go with it. And so it's a good time to kind of just play around, grab paint when you need it, and just be very careful not to touch your other wet parts of your painting just, just yet. Right, so I'm going to stick with those two, so I don't want to go too crazy with it. And I'm going to start drawing those stumps. Why do I keep calling them stumps? Um, anyway, so here we go. I'm going to use that Payne's Gray again, which if you've got black, that's fine too. I just water it down so it's more of a gray. So you're not doing that really heavy dark color right off the hop. So I'm gonna take it. Again, I'm not going to touch anywhere else that I think might have kept a little bit of that wetness just yet because I'm not really interested in having that gray sort of go into my, my beautiful colors I've got going on in there. I did a little bit of a V shape here to look like there's more branches holding onto these. You can even pull one out and put it up into the other part of the tree. These kind of trees tend to have a lot of that sort of thing going on, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to just do the same sort of thing. Figure out where I want those branches to go. And I'll just say it's on a hill because we're doing our trees in hills today. While it's still wet, I'm going to let it pull itself out because I, I don't like having that um, that line there a lot. I like having something simple and light so that I can work on what's happening with that after. All right, so remember, again, if you don't remember to do that, you can always pull and twist your brush so you get it like a nice, nice sharp tip. And we're going to pull this one down now. Uh, this one, maybe I'll make it a thin tree. And then I'm going to add some more branches. Decide if I like it. If I don't, I can pull it out. You know? Well, there we go. We kind of have the same sort of style, but that's fine. Um, and then, because I am that person, I'm going to add some more trees in the background but I'm not going to put the colors in yet because I want the front ones to dry before I start adding those darker colors or different colors in the background so I'm just going to leave it like that and um, maybe one more right here all right so you've got this nice little kind of hillside of trees you can start adding some greens in there after whatever you choose to do. If you want a spooky kind of scene, you can do oranges and purples. Those are always really nice together. Uh, I'm going to go back to my kind of orangey colors. 
and start working those in. You can see again, it's drier now, so it's not pulling that color across your, your tree as much, which gives you a little more control in putting it in the spots that you need. So I'm gonna put all my darker colors at the bottom so that I'm making sure the light's coming from a certain spot, right? You wanna remember that anything you're putting in your image is gonna have a light source. And the thing with trees is if you're gonna do a tree from far away, you don't focus on each leaf, you focus on the larger amount of things with the darker surface. So your bottom of your tree is gonna be darker. You're gonna work it in, because again, remember it dries way lighter, but I think 30% lighter, then you put it on. And then you can go in with that same kind of darker color and do the bottoms of whatever large parts are going to be in your tree, right? So it's giving it that idea or that shaping of what a tree actually would look like. Um, don't forget that you're going to have those everywhere. And we're going to piece that back together with the background after we get that in. Right, so that's what you kind of want to play with. You can even add little spots underneath if it's not touching where your branches are. Just remember if it's if it's not dry, it's going to seep into that. So just be very wary of that. Ah, uh, thank you. Right, so that's where we are. Um, and then I'm going to grab some of this. Thank you so much. You're so nice. Um, yeah, so I'm going to grab some deeper reds for this other tree. Obviously, it's a little bit of a different color. And again, because the light is no longer wet, it's not going to pull in all that color. So I can kind of go ahead and start using a darker amount of color closer to the other trees. Right? So you can see how it's starting to really add that kind of depth. And this is one thing about watercolors, you just want to remind yourself that if you're painting it, it takes time. You don't want to be frustrated with yourself, you're just going to enjoy the experience. There's no point in... Ooh, there's black on my finger. Um, <laughs> there's no point in painting anything if you're not having a good time doing it. Or if it's frustrating you, then it's always nice. You can always step away from it. You can always take your time. Put little dots here and there. Maybe some leaves are falling. But yeah, you don't want to not be having fun with it. And like I said, I tend to touch things, move them around with my fingers so that it does something I want. Again, I'm not very... Uh, I'm not very patient. <laughs> okay, so again, as you keep going with your different layers, you just want to get a little bit darker each time, and you don't want to force it. If you force it, it's going to get frustrating. And you don't want to completely cover everything you've done, right? So if you're doing a darker color, you kind of want to use the color before that to start building that depth for you. You don't want to have to push it too much, right? So you can see I'm just dabbing those in there and I'm using the layer before that to give me the idea of it being a gentle kind of transition from this color to the other. Um, if you go from this to like stark, dark, red it's going to just look strange right and this one it's bleeding into where we need it to go and it's giving the idea that that light source you're, you're needing to work into is is there hi mom my mom's watching she's a better artist than me but you know take what you can out of this but yeah so, you 
can see I'm just pushing in the colors where I think they should go. Again, there's no right or wrong here. It's just trying to figure out the best way to go about it. Yeah, so I'm liking that. I like how that's going. I'm going to move on again to my red tree. My nice little yellow tree is starting to get all those nice fall colors happening. So the red tree is going to be a little different. We're going to use a little more of a darker color there. It's not going to be different in the way we're doing it. It's just going to be the difference of colors. So you can see I've used a little more of my shapes down here. So it looks like there's more kind of bushy spots. And I'm going to try and keep that alive as I paint because I don't want to lose that. Oh, wow, it's almost 10 too already. It's all right, I'll finish this before I get out of here. But... but yeah, so you can kind of see how it's starting to work. You can see that there's shadows all coming from the spots that I want them to. Um, I might add a little bit there. Again, if you feel like you've got too much paint on there and you're not afraid to kind of dab at your painting like I do, you can do that. Not the worst thing in the world to do. And then I'm just going to really lightly, maybe add a little more water there, push in some more shadows as I go up because it, you don't want to have all these dark shadows in the, in the bottom and nothing on top because that's, again, going to look a little strange. So yeah, and you can, again, work and push them through the way you need to. And again, because I'm a bit of a sucker for blues, and anything in the background, like the sky color, I'm going to use some ultramarine blue and I'm going to just push that in there with my larger round brush. Give it a kind of way to shape those trees a little more so you can see them, I guess. Again, if your trees are still wet, um, be very careful with where you're putting your other colors because they will bleed in. So, maybe make a little bit more of a darker color again, because we are dealing with fall and everything seems to be a little bit darker, a little less bright. I'm going to go ahead and try and work in some of those blues between my trees. This may not turn out well, but we'll try it. Everything's dry, so you can see that it's got that difference between where I'm leaving it and where I'm scared to touch the trees with the color. Which is okay. I'm good with it. Again, if you did the same thing with the other trees, like with this one, you can even use the color on the outside to give the implication that there is clouds. So, you know, if you've got a color on there that you didn't quite like, or if you kind of made a blob that you didn't like, you can always turn it into something else, right? So here we go again with some more of that ultramarine blue. Some of the colors are very hard to say. Um, and then I've mixed it in with a little bit of a phthalo blue. I'm not going to try and say that whole word again because I know it's really hard to say. And I have troth muggle. Alright, so I'm going to keep kind of dabbing it around. Get those trees kind of surrounded. And then because I feel daring today, I'm going to get some more of that green that we used. And I'm going to bring it along the bottom. To kind of give it that kind of grassy sort of look. So you can see we're turning it into its own little own little world kind of, right? You, you add little things as you go and it, it turns into so much more. Um, and you can even grab some more of that yellow after that um, because it is a fall sort of scene and push it into the rest of those greens. And it's going to kind of give you that sort of browning fall grass kind of look, right? Um, I might have put a little too much in there, but that's okay. Right? You can push it around, move it, get it to where you want it to be. 
And I'm gonna let the green fight with it a little more, so I'm gonna just grab some more of it. Because I don't want to lose that kind of... I really like that green. Yeah. So you can kind of see how that's working out. The green's sort of taking over that yellow again. Obviously it'll do that because green and yellow. And then I can even play with dabbing it around, making it look a little more fun. And there we go. We've got a nice little background, got a nice little start to what our trees look like. And then I'm going to go in with my smaller brush, this guy, which is again, it's around, it's just very thin. Um, you can get them at dollar stores. I get them at Opus or Dragon's Den, which is in town here in Penticton. Um, they have beautiful brushes for very small watercolor paintings or things like that. They've got lots of great stuff. Both Opus and Dragon's Den are hard to stay away from. <laughs> so, um, because I'm working on this and my, my little spots in here are kind of losing their themselves underneath all those branches. I'm going to pull a little more dark into them. Maybe dab out a little more. I should have a napkin, but I don't. <laughs> um, but you can see that adding just that little bit of dark and bringing it down adds worlds of difference to what is happening in your image. So I'll pull it down. Okay, let's let it do that too. You can see again, this was wet, so it's pulling that black into it. But I'm going to use that um, to my advantage and let it kind of drag itself down because um, I'm, I'm kind of cool with it. There's one there, right? We've got some tree branches to deal with. And I'm going to pull it together with all this black because I really kind of, I'm digging it. Again, I should be using a bigger brush, but I didn't really need to do that, so I'm going <laughs> to play with it that way. But you can see, again, all these colors can work together. Um, and if you make a mistake, it's totally okay. Like I said, I didn't really mean for that to be that way, but I forgot this was wet, so mindfulness about that key. So, yeah. I'll play with that, let that come down. And just kind of enjoy how it's working out you know you can even kind of just add you know it's the best part is you might discover something that you really like happening to your painting just because it was a, a bit of a mistake right so if you want to keep doing that you can keep going forward with your colors you can kind of make those extra trees have some more branches behind what you've got going on. It'll probably be darker because of what's underneath. If you like the kind of free spirit of what the watercolors are doing, you can let it blend into the bottom too. Like, I mean, it'll be a nice little painting either way with that kind of color coming in the side there. But you can see what I mean when you're talking about layers and when you're talking about adding things one at a time. If it bleeds down on you, that's okay because again, you can find ways to fix it and you can find ways to work through that, right? So the biggest things that should be taken away from this is that you can, you can work through any mistakes you've got and you can kind of have fun, you know, discovering what your painting is doing for itself. It's like kind of watching a little bit of a movie sometimes. You're you're not sure what's going to happen, but it's something's happening. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to push a few more colors down in there. If I like how it's working, then that's great. But I'm going to add a little bit more water because I feel like I need to add more there. And then if you're feeling a little ready to add to the, the rest of it, you can even add little dots in there. Uh, less is more, by the way, so just make sure you don't do too much. But if you add some dots in some places, Maybe not when your finger's wet. Um, you can, you know, give it the impression that there's there's some leaves in areas like that, right? So you can you can give those examples. With the yellow one, I'm going to use the red dots because I think those would stand out more. You can even get into more oranges. Um, 
play with other colors, things like that. Maybe if greens, if it's dry enough. But you can kind of play with it and give it that sort of textured feel. All right. Um, I feel like this should be darker. So I'm going to just really add some dark to that. Because I like how it's looking in there. And then move it into this one because I think it could be darker too. Right? But yeah. So you you could literally do this all day. I, I can, that's for sure. Um you know, play with it, enjoy it, see what happens. You know, these ones turned out a little different than you know, no, I'll do this. And these ones, right, like you can, you can do so many different things. As you can see, I can take forever painting everything. Um, so yeah, take a little time to kind of play with what you've got. And, you know, don't hate on yourself for, for doing something you didn't think you liked to do. I mean, like this turned out really cool. So I'm really happy it kind of bled into there. I kind of like how the trees are looking that way. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I could even go in with some of that Payne's Gray and add some branches in some more spots. Like, just make it look like there's something happening. You know? I didn't quite like that. Um, but, yeah. You know, as you can see, uh, I didn't like that, so I'm going to fix it <laughs> as much as I can. But, yeah, you can, you can kind of mess with things. Like, you could take that black that I just dropped in there and completely darken your trees, right? Um, if you want to add more water, you can wash it over, make sure it doesn't get too far, you pull it back. If you have too much water on there, you can dry out your brush and just start sucking it out because that brush is going to actually pull out a lot of that if you don't like it, right? So, I mean, you can do all these different things. It'll change how your painting is, but it will also give you an idea of what you can do and how you can do it. So, yeah, those are what we've done today. Anyways, uh, like I said, if you're watching this when it's not live, um, feel free to post what you painted, ask any questions. I will try and pay attention to where the comments are coming from. I'll get notifications either way. Um, yeah, and if you have questions, just let me know. If you're more interested in sketching and drawing, the next class will be lions as a landslide of people, or, or not lions, sorry, elephants. Landslide of people chose elephants and only a couple of people chose lines, so we're doing elephants. Um, but thank you guys so much, um, and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving! Bye.